Welcome to worship. I'm Barb, Pastor Barb, with Trinity Lutheran Church in Greencastle. We continue in the Easter season. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Join me in proclaiming the wonderful news. When I say Christ is risen, you respond, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. To prepare for worship, I invite you to find a slice of bread and cup of juice or wine for communion. If that isn't possible, know that your desire for union with Jesus is Holy Communion. Pause the video while you gather the bread and cup. A copy of the worship plan for today is on our website, tlcgreencastle.org, if you would find that helpful. Click News and Events, then Bulletins. We continue to gather by computer to protect the vulnerable in our community. I invite you to join me in the responses to the prayers and readings and singing the hymns. Now close your eyes, take a deep breath, put your cares and concerns at the foot of the empty tomb. Notice God noticing us as we begin worship. Please join us in singing the prelude, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. Follow the words on the worship plan or on the screen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you who have created us and sustain us, we come with thanksgiving for these moments when we can ease the pace of our lives and listen for your voice. Create a spirit within us that truly draws us toward you and toward our brothers and sisters, a spirit deep, perceptive, gentle, and bold. Clear our minds, open our hearts, and touch us with your presence and your power. And the people of God say, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And a word of scripture. Our first reading is Psalm 116 from the Psalms Now translation by Leslie Brandt. I know that God is here. I know this because with my soul bare and my body naked before him, he looked on me with love and responded to my cry for help. There was a time when I didn't care. I was not aware of any particular need for him but then I hit bottom. Death itself reached out to embrace me. There was no one else to turn to. I cried out to God in my desperation. I could almost feel his invisible hand encircle me and draw me to himself. Now I am convinced God is here and I shall trust him forever. I will no longer wait for pain or suffering to drive me to him. I will walk in his course for my life. I am committed to his purposes and I intend to carry out that commitment. I can never repay God for his ever present love. I can only dedicate my life to praising him 
and to serving him wherever I may be. I am his servant and his child. I shall love him forever. I shall proclaim to all the world, God is in our midst. Here ends the psalm. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. On that same day. What day? Easter. Even though Easter seems ages away now, the event we heard about today is the afternoon of Jesus' resurrection. Luke sets us up to remember that Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene that morning. We remember that she ran to tell the good news. And two disciples, Cleopas and an unnamed friend, are walking to Emmaus. They aren't part of the inner group locked in that upper room, but they are close enough to the action that they know all the details. They were there for the crucifixion. They were there to hear the story from the women, that unbelievable story, that story told in an ancient culture that considered women unreliable witnesses. Jesus is risen. And so the disciples leave. They aren't taken in by this nonsense. We have no details, but unless you're a hiker, you don't walk seven miles toward a village for fun. I bet they packed up their stuff, called it quits, and were going home. Called it quits because it didn't work out. Jesus died on that cross. All their hopes and dreams for someone to redeem Israel died on that cross. It is possible that their idea for redeeming Israel needed some tweaking. Most Jews of the time expected a Messiah, but that Messiah was going to kick Rome out on her ear so Israel would become a great nation again. No one expected the new thing that God did in response to the terrible violence of the cross. Rather than retaliation, Resurrection? Who are you kidding? Jesus connects with the two disciples on the road and they don't recognize him. Why didn't Jesus show his wounds like he did with the others? Perhaps these folks needed to talk it out, name what they feel and how they were affected. Did you notice? It boils down to these three little words. We had hoped. We understand that kind of disappointment. All of us at one time or another experienced the kind of devastating disappointment those three words hold. We had hoped. Our marriage would grow stronger. My loved one would recover. Our child would kick drugs. We had hoped the bank would give some grace on the loan. I could keep my job. My friend or relative would accept my apology. We had hoped the tumor would shrink. My family would escape the coronavirus and on and on and on. You can sense the layers of disappointment and dashed hopes, the stories beneath the words, the unmet expectations, the frustration, the feelings of abandonment, the judgment and shame, the grief and loss. Most of us at one time or another have walked on the road to Emmaus. It's vital we acknowledge that life is no picnic or the news Jesus brings means very little. Those men walking to Emmaus were shattered with broken hearts, broken dreams, lost hope. To say they stood looking sad is something of an understatement. So what does Jesus do 
He listens to the whole story. Even though he went through it himself, he still listens. It's so hard to just listen. Other people's emotional and spiritual pain makes us uncomfortable. We want to fix it, find the rainbow in the cloud, make lemonade from lemons. Emotional and spiritual pain need a full hearing. Doctors tell us that stuffing it is bad for our health. Sharing emotional and spiritual pain is an important step in letting it go. Being there and listening is called a ministry of presence. Listening is not fixing. Listening is giving pain a fair hearing. Jesus gives us an example of what that looks like. We had hoped. We had hoped this stupid virus was just a variation of the flu. This time of sheltering at home is getting really old. Many of us are grieving without realizing that's what's happening. We miss our grandchildren and gathering with friends and family, gathering with our family of faith at church. We miss no fuss shopping. Some of us are anxious about jobs and finances. We're worried about the complications of catching the virus. Those on the front lines risk death on a daily basis. It's just plain hard. Jesus listens to us as he listens to those disciples. It's important to name the pain. And how does Jesus respond after listening? He interprets scripture and shares the good news of resurrection. Resurrection from the ashes of betrayal, despair, and defeat. Resurrection, not as life as expected, not as life as before, but new life. Sin and death have been defeated. Jesus is raised. And they still don't get it. Frankly, we don't get it either. We want things as they were, or as we dreamed they should be. Jesus walks on ahead as if he were going on. Did you notice? He doesn't force himself on them. Love doesn't coerce. What would he have done if they had simply let him go? But they don't. And in the breaking of the bread, they recognize him. Were not our hearts burning within us? They didn't recognize him, yet Jesus was walking with them on that road when they were feeling their most powerless and defeated. We had hoped. They didn't recognize him in the stories of scripture, yet their hearts and intuition told them God was there. They sat down to eat and finally knew him in the breaking of the bread. Sometimes, in our deep and emotional, spiritual pain, we cry, where are you, God? It's hard to recognize Jesus through the fog of disappointment and dashed hopes. It's important in those times to avoid discounting our pain and reaching for rainbows and lemonade without first acknowledging the pain and moving through it. Jesus shows us that we don't take our Emmaus walks alone. Jesus is there. How do we recognize him? Cleopas and his friend recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Jesus is here in the bread and wine of Holy Communion as we gather by computer. They realized their hearts were burning as they listened to Jesus interpret the scripture. Jesus is here. Jesus is with you when we prayerfully read scripture expecting to meet God. The two disciples were walking together, supporting one another. Jesus is here as we administer to and support one another. Are you on your way to Emmaus today? Know, my friend, that God loves you.
as you travel down that road. In fact, Jesus is walking right beside you. Look for him today. I invite you to take a deep breath and open your heart. The promise of resurrection is meant for you today, not just at the end of your life. Resurrection hope abounds despite pandemics and challenges in life. And now I invite you to take a deep breath. Allow God's love to fill you to the inmost part of your being. Know that in your Emmaus walk, you are not alone. God wraps you in arms of comfort and peace. The sermon hymn is Open Our Eyes, Lord. Please join us in singing and follow the words on the screen or the worship plan. Separated in our residences, but united by God's promise of restoration, we pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. When you hear the words, loving God, respond, hear our cry, echoing today's psalm. Come to the church, so burdened by heartache. Give us faith to know your loving presence among us. Open the scriptures to us and nourish us with your word and the breaking of the bread. Loving God, hear our cry. Come to the earth, bless all the natural world, renew landscapes, cleanse the waters and protect the animals. Save your people, especially at this time from destructive storms and floods. Keep viruses in check for the sake of your beloved humans. Loving God, hear our cry. Come to the nations, preserve all people from war and violence. Guide the leaders of nations, our president, our governors, and our legislators toward wise decisions in struggling against the virus and in reviving the economy. Teach all peoples how to share limited resources with those in greater need. Loving God, hear our cry. Come to all who suffer from the virus. Comfort the mourners, heal the sick, sustain medical workers, empower those researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Stay with us and accompany all those who are isolated or afraid. Give to those with prior ailments and chronic diseases their necessary medical care. We pray especially for those in our hearts and minds at this time. Loving God, Hear our cry. As at Emmaus, you join the meal of the disciples. So come also to our tables. Uphold farmers and all who produce, package, and market our food. Guard the health of those who work at grocery stores. Bless the efforts of local food banks. Enable us to feed the children who have relied on food given out at school. Loving God, hear our cry. Walk with us on our roadways, whether marked with sorrow or joy, and receive our petitions, both sad lament or fervent praise. Loving God, hear our praise, prayer, hear our cry. Thank you for those who have died in the faith. 
including those stricken with the virus, the medical workers who died healing others, and those in our minds and hearts. Accompany us now as you did them, until at the end of all things, we feast at your table with all the saints in glory. Loving God, hear our cry. With bold confidence in your care, O holy and gracious God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our saving Lord. And the people of God say, Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In that resurrection hope, we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the risen Christ present to us as he promised in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Receive the bread of life offered for you. The bread of life given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your promise of life made tangible in this holy communion of bread and wine. We have rested in your love. We have tasted of your nourishing, nurturing presence. Send us now to make Christ known through our words and deeds. And the people of God say, Amen. Go now as witnesses of God's eternal presence. May Christ himself make himself known to you in all things. And may the Holy Spirit open your eyes and set your hearts on fire with love. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace to love and serve God and each other. Thanks be to God. We will. Please sing with us the postlude, Jesus Christ is risen today. Follow the words on the worship plan or on the screen.